All right, so this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to do an encrypted Arch Linux install using my custom Deadhead Installer ISO. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're actually going to want to head over to SourceForge and go ahead and grab my Installer ISO. Um, it comes in at 623 megabytes, which is actually 65 megabytes smaller than the official Arch ISO. So you're going to want to go ahead and download that first and you're going to want to go ahead and either burn it to a CD or write it to a USB or however you want to do to boot it. Okay. So once you go ahead and boot it up you're going to be at a screen that looks like this. It's going to be the Arch Linux Deadhead installer. So you're going to select your architecture either 64-bit or 32-bit. Okay. We're going to go with 64-bit. And it's going to go ahead and boot and we'll be right back after it boots. Once the installer boots up, you're going to be presented with this screen. It's going to say, Welcome to the Deadhead Arch Installer ISO. Um, any questions or comments, go ahead and send them my email. And it's going to say, To begin installing Arch Linux, simply type Arch Installer. So we're going to do Arch Dash Installer. So it's Arch Dash Installer and press Enter. Okay, and then we're going to be in the actual installer. Okay, it's going to say, would you like to be in the install process? If you hit no here, you're just going to be put back out on the command line. So we're going to hit yes. The first thing it does is it goes ahead and checks your connection. And what this actually does is it's testing your download speed. And the amount of time the loading bars take later on in the installer are actually going to be based off your current download speed. Okay, next you're going to select your locale. Um, I'm going to go with ENUS UTF-8, which is the default US locale. Um, you'll have to figure yours out. Okay, next you're going to enter your time zone. So you're going to scroll through the list of time zones here, and you're going to find yours. I'm going to go with US. Then you're going to set your subzone if necessary. I'm going to go with Eastern, so US Eastern. Okay, and then it's going to ask you to set your key map. I would recommend leaving this default unless you have a reason to change it. So um, I would go ahead and just leave default US. Next, it's going to give you a list of all the drives connected to your computer and ask you which one you want to install Arch onto. Um, so you're going to want to take note of the size of the drive beforehand that you wish to install Arch onto, and you're going to want to select it from here. I'm going to go with the 10 gig drive, the biggest one I have connected to this virtual system. Okay, then it's going to ask you to select your partitioning method. Um, auto partitioning is going to format the entire drive. Go ahead and create a partition scheme on that and install Arch to it. So that will actually erase everything. Same with auto partition encrypted, what we're going to be doing today. That it'll erase the entire drive and create an, an encrypted partition scheme on it. Manual partition allows you to actually partition the drive yourself and select your mount points. So for instance, if you'd like to dual boot with another system, you could come in here and do manual partitioning and install Arch right next to another system that you already have on the drive. This, this will allow you the ability to, to dual boot if you wish. Um, but for this video, we're going to be doing auto partition encrypted. It's going to say warning will erase all data, so you've actually got to check over and hit yes to continue. This will actually format it. It's going to ask you if you'd like to create a swap space. I'm going to go with yes. Um, the only thing to keep in mind here is to align it to either M, so either have a capital M for megabytes or a capital G for gigabytes. So I'm going to do 512 megabytes, which is the default. Would you like to use GPT partitioning? No reason. I'm going to do no. It's going to say warning, this will encrypt the drive, continue. So you got to hit yes here. Okay, and then it's going to ask you for a password for the encrypted drive. So you're going to go ahead and set a nice strong password here. And this drive, this password will actually be used to encrypt the drive. So every time your computer boots, you'll enter this password to actually unlock the drive. It's going to go ahead and actually encrypt the drive and then create the file system on it. Once that's done, it's going to ask you if you'd like to update your mirror list, which I recommend doing. You want to have a fresh mirror list to ensure you get all the latest packages. Nice, steady, fast download. So you're going to come in here, you're going to select your country code. Um, I'm going to go with the United States. Going to go ahead and grab a new mirror list from archlinux.org. 
and then it's going to go ahead and rank that mirror list and it's going to put the fastest ones at the top for you so you get the fastest possible download speed. Okay, once the mirror list is ranked, it's going to go ahead and ask to begin installing Arch Linux onto the drive. So I'm going to go ahead and hit yes here, and it's actually going to begin the install process. Um, the amount of time this actually takes is going to be completely based off of your internet speed. Um, I'm actually connected to a local repo, so my loading bar is actually going a little slower than it's, it's going to get done a lot sooner than it looks like. But I'm going to pause the recording here, and we'll be right back once Arch Linux is installed. Alright, so once the install process is complete, it's going to detect whether or not you have a 64-bit architecture. If you do, it's going to prompt you to add the multi-lib repos to your Pac-Man configuration file. Um, so if you're prompted for this, I'd go ahead and hit yes. It's going to ask you if you want to add the Archie French use repositories to your Pac-Man config, so um, we're going to go ahead and do yes for that as well. Next it's going to ask you to set your host name. The default is Arch. Um, we're going to do Arch VBox because this is a virtual box install. It's going to ask you for your root password. Go ahead and set a strong password here. Okay, it's going to ask you if you'd like to create a new user, so I'd recommend creating a user now. Go ahead and set your username as well as your user password. Okay, it's going to ask to enable sudo privilege for members of wheel. What this is going to do is it's going to enable your user to use the sudo command to administer your system rather than having to log in as root. Um, so if you click no here, it'll effectively make the sudo command useless. Um, so you're probably going to want to hit yes here so you can use sudo to do administrative tasks rather than having to do su and log in as root every time. So we're going to hit yes here. Enable DHCP at boot. Uh, this leases you an IP from your router. If you hit no here, you will not have internet when you boot. You'll have to configure your IP configuration yourself. So I recommend hitting yes so your IP configuration is automatically taken care of. Install wireless tools and WPA supplicant. Um, you'll need these if you have Wi-Fi, if you, if you want to be able to connect to the wireless network right after you boot. Um, so if you hit no here and you have Wi-Fi, you will not be able to connect to that Wi-Fi. If you're using Wi-Fi, you're probably going to want to go ahead and hit yes here. I'm not using Wi-Fi, so I'm going to hit no. Install grub to dev SDA. This will actually make it bootable. So this is actually the bootloader, so we're going to go ahead and install that. Install OS Prober first. OS Prober um, is required if you plan on dual booting with another operating system. It lets grub detect that operating system and add it to the boot record. Um, so if you plan on dual booting, you're going to want to go ahead and do that. I, I'm not dual booting, so we're going to do now. It's going to go ahead and first it's going to download Grub. Okay, once that's done, it's actually going to install Grub to the drive and actually make that drive bootable. Okay, then it's going to go ahead and configure Grub. So we now have a fully bootable Arch Linux encrypted system installed onto our drive. So it's going to ask you if you'd like to install Xorg server, and what that is is it's a graphical server, so it will allow you to actually have a desktop rather than just a server environment. So if you click no here, you'll be booted into the command line. So we're going to go ahead and click yes. It's going to go ahead and install Xorg and pause the video and we'll be right back. Okay, once Xorg is installed, it's going to prompt you to select your graphics driver. So if you're not sure here, just leave it default in MESA. Um, if you have AMD, we have uh, Intel drivers, NVIDIA drivers, and I also have VBox here. So if you're actually installing Arch Linux into VirtualBox, you're going to want to do this because this will provide you with the VirtualBox guest editions, which will give you more features within VirtualBox, so if you're which we're doing. so. Okay, and then it's going to say, would you like to install a desktop environment or a window manager? Um, 
so we're going to go ahead and do yes here to actually install a desktop. So I've got a small list. I've got XFCE, i3, Mate, LXDE, Gnome, Cinnamon, Openbox, Fluxbox, Awesome, and DWM. I'm going to go with XFCE. It's going to say, would you like to install XFCE goodies? We're going to go ahead and do that. It's going to ask you if you'd like to install a display manager. So this is actually going to give you a graphical interface to log into rather than logging into a server environment every time. So we'll go ahead and do that as well. And we'll pause the video and we'll be right back when this is done. Alright, next it's going to ask if you'd like to install some common software. So we're going to go ahead and do this. I've got a small list here of some software. I plan on adding more soon. This is just a small list of popular software I've added. Um, to check and uncheck, you just press spacebar. So it's just spacebar to check and uncheck. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and get screen fetch. And I think that's all I'm going to get. So you just select as many packages as you want. And then when you're ready to download them, you just hit enter. It's going to go ahead and grab the software and install it. And now the install process is actually complete, so it's going to ask to reboot. So if you hit yes, it'll just go ahead and reboot. We're actually going to hit no. And it says system installed. Would you like to unmount? We'll go ahead and unmount. Okay, so 13 minutes and 7 seconds. Not too bad. Okay, so this is an SSH session, so we can actually go ahead and exit that now. And if you remember in the beginning of the video, I had a virtual system here. So this is the actual virtual system that I've been in controlling this whole time, which is booted into my Arch Linux installer, as you can see here. Um, so we're going to go over to Devices, Optical Devices, and as you can see here, DH Arch Linux ISO is in the drive. So we'll go ahead and remove that. We'll go ahead and force unmount. It'll probably cause some errors, but that's all right. And we're just going to come over here and reset the machine. Okay, so as you can see here, we're at a fresh grub menu, Arch Linux, go ahead and boot it up. And this was an encrypted install, so it's going to ask you for the password you set for your encrypted drive. Go ahead and enter the password, it's going to go ahead and decrypt it and load your system for you. Okay, so... Here we are at the Slim Display Login Manager, so we'll go ahead and enter my username that I set and my password. And here we are in XFCE, fresh install. Guest Edition's working just as expected. Let's go ahead and open up a terminal. And there we go, fresh Arch Linux install. If we go ahead and LSDLK, as we can see here, fully encrypted swap, fully encrypted temp, and fully encrypted root partitions for a fully encrypted Arch Linux install. And that is how to do an Arch Linux encrypted install in under 15 minutes using my installer ISO. Hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching.